to break down what investors should look for from the Fed going forward. We have Kevin Flanagan, Wisdom Tree Head of Fixed Income Strategy. So thank you for joining us here today. Just briefly, it's been another whirlwind week with the Fed and everything, some macro data points. What's the highlight for you? What can we take forward as we close this week and look ahead to the next? I think you hit the nail right on the head in the beginning when you mentioned the changing market outlook. We went from six rate cuts, which the March meeting was supposed to be the first one. Now the market's happy. We're going to get three rate cuts for this year. At least that's what the dot plot is showing. So to me, it's not necessarily when does this process begin? It's what is it going to look like? Are they going to cut rates in consecutive meetings, take some time off? I think that's what we're going to be grappling with as we move closer to mid-year. And Kevin, with the data now obviously showing inflation remains very sticky and well above the Fed's target, what do you think that rate cut path is going to look like at this point? A, f a fascinating point that Powell mentioned at what used to be called as Humphrey Hawkins testimony, the Fed may not have to wait for inflation to get down to 2%. So as you mentioned, 2.8. So is 2.5 the new 2%? And if that's the case, you begin to wonder, especially from my vantage point, how would the bond market respond to that if you're seeing CPI readings? still coming in at three, three and a half percent. So the Fed's going to need to walk, I think, a kind of a fine line if they go down that road. Let me um, let me posit maybe a worst case scenario for the Fed, which is that it finds itself behind the eight ball yet again with uh, inflation rising. And we've seen some early indications of this, the uh, three month numbers, the six months numbers, even if the year and year numbers are still going down or have stalled, we're seeing a little bit of an uptick here. What if the Fed is caught behind the eight ball? What does that market repricing look like if the Fed has to go even higher or engage in a rate hiking uh, campaign once again? Well, there, there, I, I, I think everyone would probably agree there is right now no feeling whatsoever that the Fed would have to reverse course and begin hiking rates once again. So that would be perhaps your worst case scenario going forward, that all of a sudden we go from two or three rate cuts where the Fed has to contemplate starting up the engines again on their rate hike episode. So I, I would be leery about that. I think if anything going forward, that what the Fed would do is not necessarily hike rates. They would just keep us right where we're at for a longer period of time. Kevin, there's so much to know right now. There are so many different scenarios floating around briefly, like we have discussed in terms of what we're going to be seeing here from rates. So what can investors do today or over the next couple of days to take advantage of some of that uncertainty at this time? I think, you know, from a bond market perspective, it's kind of steady as she goes. We've been talking about slowly, deliberately kind of moving your investments back to a core benchmark in terms of duration. I don't think there's any reason why anyone has to dive headfirst into the pool here. Kind of look at this as a scenario where rates now are in a new regime. Essentially, we've gone back to pre-financial crisis levels and look at your bond portfolio in that kind of context. Let me ask you here, what does it look like for investors, given the fact that we have the Federal Reserve, uh, we, nobody knows what the central bankers are doing, but we know that their trajectories. Federal Reserve uh, on pause right now. Over in Japan, they still have negative rates. ECB a little bit behind the Fed. We have different interest rates around the world. How can investors take uh, advantage of that right now? Well, I, I would say right now you primarily want to stay here. If you're a U.S. investor, primarily stay within the U.S., stay domestic on the fixed income side. We have a treasury suite of offerings that provide for different rate scenarios. That's how I would play it. You can use a laddered approach, which is what we're talking about here with these strategies. You can do a barbell approach as well, where what you're doing is you're really not putting your chip on red where you think rates are definitively going. You're playing this new rate regime. We're in these higher, these elevated ranges, and that's where I would focus.